Just bow the knee in humble adoration For at His name, every knee must bow Let every tongue confess His Christ God's only Son Sovereign Lord, we give you glory now Let's lift our hands unto Him For honor and blessing and power Belongs to you, Jesus Belongs to you Belongs to you For honor and blessing and power Belongs to you Belongs to you Lord Jesus Christ Son of the living God Hallelujah Jesus shall take Jesus shall take the highest honor Jesus shall take the highest praise Let all earth join in heaven in exalting The name which is above all other names Let's bow our knees in humble adoration For at His name, hallelujah For at His name Every knee must bow Every tongue confess His Christ God's only Son Sovereign Lord, we give you glory now For honor and glory and power Belongs to you Belongs to you for honor and blessing and power. Belongs to you. Belongs to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God. Let's sing again, Jesus. Shall take the highest honor. Jesus shall take the highest praise. Let all earth join in heaven in exalting. The name which is above all other names. Let's bow the knee in humble. Adoration for at his name, for at his name, every must bow. Let every tongue confess his Christ, God's only Son. Sovereign Lord, we give you glory now. Would you sing this morning for that? Belongs to you, belongs to you for honor and blessing and power. Belongs to you, belongs to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God. For honor. to you belongs to you for honor and blessing and power belongs to you belongs to you Lord Jesus Christ Son of the Living 
Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near. God is with me, and in my God is with me. Whom shall, whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh no, hallelujah. Oh no, you never let go through the storm and through the storm. In every high and every low, oh Lord, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. And I can see the light, and I can see the light that is coming for the heart that holds on. A glorious light beyond all compare. There will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, we live to know you here on the earth. And I will fear no evil, and I will know evil. For my God is with me, and in my God is with me. storm oh lord you never let go every high and every low oh lord you never let go lord you never let go of me oh no you never let go oh no you never let go through the calm and through the storm you never let go in every high and in every low. Oh Lord, you never let go, Lord. You never let go of me. One more time, oh Lord, you never let go. Oh Lord, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh Lord, you never let go. Let go, Lord. You never let go of me. Let's sing without the music. Oh no. Let's give him a big clap, hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the promises that you have made to all of us. That when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, dear God, hallelujah, you will walk with us. Your staff and rod will always be there to guide us and comfort us. And this morning, as we stand before you, our holy God, we want to bring uh, Sister Ming before you in prayer and contend for her healing and recovery. As even as she is in GH this time, we pray that God, that you will restore the wounds in the legs. We pray that God, you give her a creative miracle, replacing her kidneys as well and normalizing her blood in the name of Jesus. Even for Sister Becky going for surgery this coming seven, pray for the doctors that attend to her eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Guide the doctor's hands. Cause quick recovery to take place after that in the name of Jesus. Also, David Anthony and Sister Grace from the Tamil site, uh, they are in Sudan Hospital right now, fifth day in uh, COVID-19 ward. And we pray for them right now. Pray that God, you will strengthen their immune system in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will cause quick recovery. And God, we pray your angels around them to protect them even as their children is at home. We pray that God, you will provide for the children and take care of them. And this morning in this holy place, we do thank you that, God, you will not let us go. We do thank you in every high place, in every low place, that you will never let us go. And, Lord, this morning in your holy presence, we pray for one another and uh, every unspoken need this morning. And those of your people that have needs in their life and they need from you, a touch from heaven, a breakthrough in their life. God, strength during the time of weakness. Lord, we pray, God, hallelujah, the request that they ask from you. Dear God, we pray that you would begin to move on their behalf. Those who need uh, finances uh, during this time and a breakthrough in their work, in their business, God, you are their provider. Provide them for them. Those who are watching live stream in the name of Jesus Christ, God, they have need. Help them, God, uh, with their life and family. And dear God, in these last days, uh, harvest is plenteous. Laborers are few. Send forth laborers into the harvest field. Let us also be one of them. Hallelujah. As laborers, so oh Lord, give us courage. Give us wisdom, hallelujah. Give us opportunity to boldly share the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. For this nation, we ask that God, you uh, take care of this nation. Uh, the king and the authority set this morning. God, we pray your will be done, God. At the end of the day, in the name of Jesus, your will be done. I also bless this morning's service, O oh Lord. Those who are not able to attend this morning's service, wherever they may be, hallelujah, if they are in fear, God, remove the fear from them from coming to the house of God. If they are not well, God, pray, heal them completely, God, in the name of Jesus. For all the children, hallelujah, they may be going through uh, pressure, not being able to go to school, peer pressure. God, guard their minds, O oh Lord, from social media. Lord God, guard their minds from TikTok, from, from Facebook, from YouTube. Guard their minds, that their minds will always be right before you. God, that they will not be influenced by any deception from the media. And Lord God, thank you for this morning. Oh yes, Lord, what a wonderful God. We serve this morning in Jesus Christ's name we pray. 
Amen. Let's give a big clap to the Lord. Amen. Just turn around and salam one another. Amen. So we welcome you to God's house this morning. And what a wonderful presence of God just now. Amen. As we worship the Lord. A quick announcement uh, tonight and Wednesday night service starts at 7, uh, 6 o'clock prayer, 7 o'clock service. And uh, Friday night, we do have Zoom prayer meeting at 8, uh, just 40 minutes. Uh, that's how long uh, the uh, Zoom allow us to use, 40 minutes. So I encourage you to join us uh, in that prayer meeting. Wonderful testimonies that we've been hearing out from the Zoom prayer meeting. We pray for one another. And... Uh, Back to Sunday morning, 9.30, the church will be open. So from now on, the church gates will not be locked. Okay, So uh, uh, it's, uh, it's open, it will not be locked. But do not uh, come, uh, what you call that, don't, uh, how do you say it? Okay, so come on time anyway. Let me in the house of God. So praise God, we are going to receive our tithes and offering. And um, those who are watching live stream, if you do not know, you want to do uh, banking, you can uh, check with Sister Juliet the accounts number. But anyway, God values your giving. Okay, uh, The world values how much a person has. See? The world values how much a person has. You have a um, beautiful car, big house, a title that calls you Dato, you know. Uh, the world will value you. But God values how much a person gives. Okay. God values how much you give. Uh, he places a value upon your giving. Okay. Your giving... It's not just in the basket, goes to the church accounts, you know, uh, your giving, okay, it, it goes to him. And he values because the Bible tells there was one day Jesus was in the temple. He saw a woman and she has two mics. Okay, maybe if I could use two dollars or maybe 20 cents. She, is that... that is she, all she has. That is all she has. She give it, nothing left. Zero. Okay, no f money for food. No money for anything. No money to take a bus back. And Jesus took note of that woman who gave sacrificially to the Lord. So the world values what a person has. The world values people like Bill Gates and Rich and all that. But God values how much we give. Amen. So I just want to encourage you, thank you for your faithfulness in tithing and offering. So let's give to the Lord this morning as uh, Brother Daniel pray. Amen. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, for all your blessing, for your grace and mercy upon our life, O oh God. As we hear, get it together, God, uh, in life, uh, through at home, that those who give to you, each and everyone give to you their tithes and offering, faith, O oh God to your kingdom, for your purpose, for your will, O oh God. Blesses everyone here, O oh God, uh, abundantly, O oh God, in spiritual and health and physically, O oh God. Thank you for all, all that you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, I'd like you to turn to Psalms 146. I just uh, ask you to pray for me because, okay, and... Um, for uh, this month's men's meeting, I'll be preaching, sharing the word of God in the, this month's men's meeting on the 30th of October. So I ask you to pray for me that I have the mind of God uh, that would help uh, all the men that are listening through Webex uh, on October 30th, Saturday at night, a.m. Um, before we, we read Psalms 146, uh, Sister Becky have a testimony to share. Amen. So let's welcome her as she comes. Amen. Okay, Becky, the mic is there, I think. The blue one. No, 
I want to give glory and praise to God because uh, I'm going for my operation this coming 7th of October. And uh, I was worried. I don't know nobody to take care of me at home. So I was thinking whether how, how am I going to survive? So anyway, then I decided, okay, I will just find a, a, a care center where they can. Then I found out it was very expensive. And I was talking to my friends and all. And then suddenly they told me, okay, never mind, I will contribute 1000 for your stay. So I said, okay. Then after that, another friend, out of the blue, the friend which I haven't spoken to for years, she called me and asked me how I am. So I said, I'm, I'm just going for my op and all this thing. Then, then I told him, no, God was so good. God blessed me with the 1000 you know, for my stay. And he said, okay, well, never mind. I'll give you another 1000 Then I said, okay, I, I, no need. Then he said, no, 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 I'm working. I can, and God will bless me when I bless you, he said. So the, the next day, he said, you give me your account number. So I gave my account number. And the next day when I opened my message, I saw she put in 2000 for me. Praise God. I was like, Call her, how can you put in 2000 He said, no, 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 it's okay, I'm working. So I really, then last night I was talking to somebody. And somebody also told me, never mind, I'll bless you some money. And really, honestly, the thing is the money that I needed for that place, it's all been taken care of. And I thank God and praise God for all this. Praise God, amen. Amen, there's a wonderful testimony about God's blessing. Amen, God is a good God. And, um, and sister here has been uh, a faithful giver, okay, faithful tither. She would, every month she would drive her car to my house and say, Pastor, here's my tithes. Here's my offering. Okay, and um, she faithfully tithes to the Lord and gives to the Lord. And out from that, Malachi chapter 3, amen. God will open the windows of heaven and God will provide for your need. Amen. In the times of our need. Psalms 146, verse uh, uh, 1 to verse number, um, right down to verse number 10. Psalms 146 this morning. And. Um, it reads there in verse, um, we read from number f verse number 5, okay, to verse 10. Happy is he that had the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Uh, could you stand and could you read the next, next verse, which make 1, 2, 3. which execute judgment for the oppressed, which give food to the hungry, the Lord loose the prisoners. Verse 8. The Lord preserved the strangers, He relieved the fatherless and the widow, but the way of the wicked He turned upside down. Verse 10. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. This morning, I would like to bring to you a message of hope and comfort um, to you, especially if you are struggling. Uh, if you're struggling in your faith uh, this morning. The word struggle has the picture of strenuous effort in the face of difficulties and troubles or opposition. And in this, this experience or this, um, this uh, uh, effort in the face of opposition and difficulties is not something that, that uh, God's people do not find themselves at times having to face with. Okay? It is not an uncommon among God's people uh, struggles. There are some strugglings. Uh, uh, there are some of God's people, they struggle with doubts. 
and they struggle with doubts about their own salvation. Are they safe? Am I safe? There are some that struggle with uh, the past. You know, they struggle with condemnation. They struggle with uh, guilt. Uh, whatever it may be the case this morning, and if you are struggling in your, in your walk, uh, in your Christian faith, I would like to bring some uh, hope and comfort to you this morning through God's Word. Uh, found in our text this morning. Now, before we get into the text, I would like to first make a statement to you. That is the statement that has to do with what and who. And that is between what we have and between who we have, it is who we have that truly gives true meaning to our Christian life. In Luke chapter 12, Jesus there spoke about a very rich man. And in that story, Jesus calls this man a foolish man. In reason, is because he built his life with what he has. Okay? His life is about what he has instead of who he has. And when the day of accountability visit him, Jesus has this to say about him in verse 21. This is how it will be with whoever store up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. Okay? He has no who there. He has what? He has bonds. He has, uh, he has things but he has no who there. Okay? A person can have the most precious of treasures and to the most expensive of things. But if the who is not there in his life, his life shall have no uh, blessing or no meaning at all. Now in our text here in verse number 5 in the book of Psalms, the Psalms here reveal to us what makes a blessed man or a happy man a happy man. In which his happiness, as we see in verse 5, is not again based on what he has, but rather is based on who he has. It says in verse 5, Happy is he that had the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Happy is he that had the God of Jacob for his help. The who there is a living being. And the who there is called the God of Jacob. And because he has the who in his life, he is a happy man. In which this, is, this who that this man has with him that makes him a happy man is no unskillful who, but one who is able and one who is a capable who. The scripture tells us from verse uh, 5 onwards to verse number 10, this who is able to make, this who is able to keep, this who is able to execute, this who is able to give food to the hungry, able to use someone to bless, just like Becky shared in the testimony, able to lose the prisoners, able to open the eyes of the blind, able to raise them that are bowed down, also able to love the righteous, preserve the strangers, relieve the fatherless and the widow, and also able to turn the plans of the wicked upside down was 6 to us 10 which make heaven and earth the sea and all there are in which keep truth forever which execute judgment for the oppressed which give food to the hungry the Lord loose the prisoners the Lord open the eyes of the blind the Lord raise them that are bowed down the Lord love the righteous the Lord preserve he relieved the fatherless and widow. 
The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generation. And one of the things uh, of this who, uh, the ability of this who to bring happiness is his ability to help. Verse 5, happy is he that had the God of Jacob for his help. The Hebrew word for the word help is the word azer, which azer is a masculine word. This word azer is a strong word. It is, means to strongly assist and strongly give support to someone in times of hardship and distress. Because he receives assistance and support in times of hardship and distress, he's a happy man. Okay, you can see the smile of Sister Becky just now. She's a happy woman. Okay, longevity, progress, breakthrough, uh, success usually behind those life-giving words. It's many times been reason behind it. There's a strong, supportive, and assistive hands of help over and underneath that person helping him in the times of distress. Those strong, assisting and supporting hands comes in many forms. It can come in the form of a Titus, just like Paul. When Paul was in need of comfort, God sent a man called Titus to him, and Titus came, and Titus was a real blessing to him. It can come in the form of a trusted friend, like David have called Jonathan. It can come in the form of a roof. It can come in the form of a whale okay, for Jonah. Thinking about Paul, disciples helped to hold on to the ropes, to lower him down in order for him to escape in the night because people are downstairs planning to kill him. Thinking about Peter drowning, Okay, as he drowns, he calls out for help. Jesus reach out to him and pull him up. Thinking about a woman who has only one meal left with her. Okay, she's going to eat it and she and her son will die. But God began to assist her and help her through a man of God that came that day. And thinking about Paul and Silas while in prison. Psalms 1, 2, 1, verse 1 and verse 2. I will lift my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who make heaven and earth. Psalms 33, verse 20. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Psalms 115, verse 9. O Israel. Trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield between what we have and between who we have. Our text tells us that true help comes from who. And the who this morning is called the God of Jacob. He is the one who make. He is the one who keep. He is the one who execute, give, loose, preserve, Turn away the plans of the wicked upside down and added to all that, his main specialty is his ability to help. Amen. Now, when speaking about this helper, who is God, who because of him shall a man or woman find happiness, our psalmist makes a strange pairing. That is, he pairs God, with a man in whom uh, has quite a questionable character. I'm sure like me, when you read verse 5, that God is referred to as the God of Jacob. Okay. Many questions will arise in your mind about Jacob. Are you sure? Is there a mistake here or typo error? You know, is there no more qualified person than Jacob? Why him? Is there no better person than this man? Would not Joseph make a better pairing? Or would not even King Hezekiah or King Josiah? Or would not Elijah or Moses? 
Would not David himself make a better pairing? Is there no better man or no better name than to pair uh, God with this man by the name of Jacob? Those questions thus seems legitimate. Legitimate questions to wonder over. But how many of you know this morning that God makes no mistake? Amen. God does not make any mistakes. It is not that the other names are not qualified or the other names are less important. But rather, this name or this person that God pairs himself with okay, is more necessary. When the psalmist pairs him with God as the God of Jacob, it was not just done with just a simply plucking of, on the you uh, know plucking or picking a name out of a jar, you know, and say it's not okay. I got the name of Jacob, but rather it was done with a necessity behind it. Okay, being in the course of living life on earth, for even God's people, there will be times God's people can find themselves at a place of struggle. If you read about the life of Jacob, the life of Jacob is about a life of struggles. Story of poor struggle with a thorn in the flesh. And in that struggle, he prayed three times that God have it removed, which was never removed, but instead he was given sufficient grace to go through it. But in that story as well, in the life of Paul, even a man who has gone up to heaven, seen paradise, heard words that are too, you know, all for him to even talk about it. He finds himself struggling. Okay? He finds this thorn in the flesh, okay? a battle. Three times he prayed to God to have it removed until the God of Jacob spoke to him and says, My grace is sufficient for you. In Psalms 46, Psalms 46 is a beautiful Psalms, written by the sons of Korah. And it is actually a song reminding us that God is our refuge and God is our strength. Whereby in Psalms 46, he also spoke of God as our present help in trouble, in time of trouble, our present help in times of trouble. As that psalm sings of him, he twice in verse 7 and verse number 11 speaks of God just as Psalms 146 speaks of God as the God of Jacob. Listen to this in verse 1, right down to verse 11 of Psalms chapter 46. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, cellar, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just as the break of dawn. The nation raged and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The God of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord who has made desolation in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bowl and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Then he says in verse 11, The Lord of hosts is with us. And he speaks this again. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Are you struggling? Are you going through a torn in the flesh experience? Are you maybe like Hagar with your child, struggling with thirst even for survival? Are you like the disciples struggling just to stay afloat? Life uh, issues are drowning you 
and you're trying to stay afloat, are you in trouble and need of help? No worries. The God of Jacob is here, amen. And he is your present help in trouble. So we see here as well, Psalms 46, in his songs, pass God with the same questionable person as Psalms 146, pairing him as the God of Jacob. Now a point of notice or note uh, that you need to take note because twice in Psalms, one, uh, Psalms 46, uh, the psalmist there uses the word Selah twice. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. The word Selah is the word forever. Amen. The God of Jacob is our refuge forever. Forever the God who is going to help you. Thus making you happy. He is known forever to his people as the God of Jacob. Jacob the swindler. Jacob the corn man. Jacob who stole his own brother birthright. And Jacob cowardly ran from him. Jacob, a man who lacks bonus. Genesis 31, 31. Who's, uh, who say to his uncle Laban these words, I was afraid when his uncle Laban confronted him concerning a matter. Jacob, this man, okay, he has his flaws, but yet God identified himself with him, calling himself as the God of Jacob forever. Psalms 47 verse 4 even make this interesting note, proudly pairing himself with the name Jacob, but also has this to say, the glory and excellence of Jacob whom he loves. And why God, who is our helper, names himself, as the God of Jacob and not the names of those others who has a better standing than him, it is to say to us that he, God, is not discouraged, is not deterred, is not, you know, uh, discouraged by our weakness, our weaknesses and our failings. If you're struggling, even in your faith, struggling with doubt, want you to know God is not, ay, uh, why this guy? Uh. So many years of Christians still struggling. Uh. So little faith. God is not like that. He's not discouraged by your lack of, or, of, of strength. He's not discouraged by your weaknesses. Jacob is someone who does not in a way comply to the standards of what a man of God is. Jacob is in a way someone who does not meet the standards of what a man of God is. Jacob is a picture of a man who's always struggling, who's always struggling through in life. After he did what he did, he fled and he ended up in his uncle Laban's house. And in, in his uncle Laban's house, his uncle made use of him fully. The woman that he fell in love and is about to marry, he ended up marrying another woman instead of the woman he fell in love with. And then he had to work for another seven years with low wages. Instead of salary increment, his salary decrement. Okay, his salary keep going down. His uncle really made use of him. Okay. Rebecca, his wife, did something wrong. Laban came after him. Okay. The image of his brother Esau is always in his mind. Okay. This man, his life was like one life of struggle to another uh, a struggle to another struggle. Someone says that he's hardly safe. Most telling was the wrestling match he had with God. When in that match, he became a handicap. He walked with a limb. Okay. God touched the loins of his thigh. Okay. And he walked with the limb. His walk also is a struggle. Just imagine. It means his whole life during the, after that time is like a struggle. Okay. 
a struggle to climb up the staircase, a struggle to jump over a, 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 maybe a river or a drain. There was also a struggle with his two sons called Simeon and Levi that did something they should not have done. Someone says these insightful words. Every house has their own story. You do not know until you stay with them. They may look on the outside, everything is fine and everything is perfect. Until maybe you stay with them, then you know that their life has their own story. Jacob's life, you can say, is a scriptural living. You can, that is, many other afflictions of the righteous. The, afflict, the righteous goes through because of their belief, okay, because of their life, many different struggles. But though he has his struggles, and though he struggles through life, God never deserted him. Amen. But instead, went after him. The God of Jacob went after Jacob. No matter how far he runs, often assuring him, okay, assuring him okay, that everything will be okay. In Genesis 28, when he was running away from his brother Esau, he took a stone, he was tired late in the night, and he used it as a pillow. And in that sleep on the stone as a pillow, he has a dream. Verse number 12, Genesis 28. And he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou lies to thee will I give thee and, all, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 15, Behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places where thou go. Everywhere Jacob would go, God would go with him. And bring thee again to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken to thee. Verse 16. And Jacob awake out of his sleep and he says, Surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. The pairing of Jacob to God is to say to us, that God draws himself to those who are like Jacob. Okay? And maybe this morning you're struggling. You're struggling with your passion. You're struggling with your faith. You're struggling. I God, I want you to know, encourage you that God draws himself. God does not push himself away from you. Okay? For those who are afraid, to those who are weak, to those who are flawed, he draws not away from you. In fact, it is the reverse. He draws even closer to you. This man was running. This man did something. Okay? And he's running out of fear. And in the night when he used a stone as a pillow to sleep on, he had a dream. In that dream, God begins to assure him, yes, he sees your weakness. He sees your mistake, but he's not deterred by your weakness. He still runs after you, yet he still pays attention and he still wants to get involved in your life, yet he still loves us and still wants to be your God, still wants to be your guide and ever help in times of trouble. The great example again is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, in the life of Apostle Paul, whereby he prayed three times and uh, the torn in the flesh issue, and God says to him, my grace is sufficient for you. So this morning, if you're struggling, 
Amen. You're in the right place. So this morning, if you're going through uh, battles, you're in the right place. As God was with Jacob, he will be with you. And he will be with you as he helps Jacob. He will help you through this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Just want you to lift up your hands this morning. Hallelujah. And call upon the God of Jacob. Hallelujah. A God who is our helper in times of trouble. God is no respecter of person. And this morning, he's your God and my God. Don't let the devil lies to you and say he does not love you. God does not care. Look, look what you did. Look at you. This is what the devil does. He bring, he show, he, he, he enlarge your weakness and then he bang on you with that weakness. But God does not do that. God come along and see how he could help you with that as he helped Jacob. Hallelujah. Shakarabababasana. The Lamb of God. Oh, let's lift our hands to Him. Let's sing this song. Handakarabasanda. Oh, yes, Lord. That guilty soul. My Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I was so lost. Six, uh, verse twenty-six, and then and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, 
give to the disciples and say, take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. In that text speaks about Jesus taking the bread, taking the cup, and he begin to bless the bread, and he begin to give thanks, and he begins to say, eat, this is my body, drink from it, all of you, this is my blood. Book of Corinthians speaks about it, do it in remembrance of him. So this morning, before we uh, continue, we're going to um, uh, partake Holy Communion this morning. And before we take up the cup, amen, uh, I'm going to get uh, Jasper and, and, uh, and uh, Daniel, could you come and just help serve the, serve the cup and the bread? Just help to, okay, just pass, pass it to the church people. So before we break the bread and drink of the cup, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this, this grace, this mercy that you have given unto us. Grace and mercy to be able to partake. With what Jesus has done for us. His body was broken. His blood was shed. If there's no shedding of blood, there'll be no forgiveness of sin. That shedding of blood could only take place through the broken body of Christ. Without the broken body of Christ, there will also be no shedding of blood. And we thank you, Father, for giving us this grace and mercy that we can remember 2,000 years ago what Christ Jesus has done for us. And we pray that, God, as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, that, God, we will always be mindful about our relationship with you. We ask you to bless the bread this morning and the cup we pray. Amen. Let's break the bread in two. Symbolize the broken body of Christ and let's eat of the bread. Let's drink of the cup. Amen. Let's bow our heads and I ask, Daniel, could you close in the word of prayer?
Amen. God bless all of you. Amen.